Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live with Paula McCoy. How are you guys this evening? So I am going to give it some time to let everybody get on and find us. So I have been a busy little beaver trying to get uh, some pieces painted for the upcoming seminar up in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Hey, Eddie. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Mobile. All right. So, yeah, I've been busy just painting away. And uh, tonight I just want to talk about uh, the differences between the color strokes and the color concentrates since I just did a uh, clay share day on um, Jessica's clay share Facebook page, YouTube, all of that, and introduced a different product. So uh, why would I use one versus the other? So that's kind of what I want to talk about tonight. So I'm just checking all my screens and it looks like everything is going okay. Oh my gosh. Hey, Jameson, how are you? Long time no see. <laughs> anyway, all right. So behind me is one of the pieces I just painted and it's done with the color concentrates. And that one is painted on earthenware. So it was just a bisque piece. Uh, I believe that one is from Duncan. Hey, Marlene, Central Florida. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to my uh, other camera. I'm going to turn my other lights on real quick. I forgot to do that. Well, I said I was going to turn my light on. It's not coming on. All right. Here we go. And I'm going to hide me. Okay. So you should still be able to hear me. And let me take that little line away. All right. Hey, Marie. Okay, so this is a piece that I did um, on, this is B-Mix clay that I rolled out, used one of Jessica, uh, her templates, but look what happened. It cracked in two places. This was the demo I started on Clay Share Day. And so it was one of the first pieces that I'd rolled out and done. So, I, you know, I guess I should have expected that. So, um, yeah, not fun. So two cracks. So I guess that one will be mine. Hi from Wisconsin. Hi, Bridge. Hi, Betsy. Felicia, how are you, lady? Thanks for jumping on. All right. So we're talking uh, color concentrates. I just thought I'd show you some of these pieces and uh, describe what I did on them. So this is one that I did on a live a couple of weeks ago. And um, there was a little blemish on it here. I know that probably doesn't matter to somebody else, but it does to me. Um, and I think we'll just give this one away tonight. I'll add one, another prize in, Jenny. I didn't think about that until I pulled this one out of the kiln this morning. So this is um, actually a Petro mold. This is one that I used, and I haven't taken my stilt marks off, so don't, don't get on to me. Uh, Petro mold, I used to do samples for him. So he had a series of, I think there's three sizes in this particular plate. And we did a couple of different ones at retreat. So I'm trying to use up some of the bisque that I have sitting in storage from all of those. So this is color concentrates. We did a few, it may be a month ago. You can go back and watch. I sumi shaded the colors on and then did some brush work um, on the leaves. Okay. So that's how that one was done. And when you're doing your edges, use those one inch foam brushes. Okay. And just go around the edge. It's really nice. You can do any shape, whether it's square, round, petal, wavy, it doesn't matter what it is. You can do it. Okay. And here is those plates. Look at these. So this is the stoneware one, this one that has the ribs here. They're painted with the exact colors. The only thing I did different was I added the comma strokes in the background on the earthenware one. And this was, it doesn't say, I thought it was Duncan Bisque, but maybe Bisque Imports. Okay. So you can see that the colors don't change that much, except for, look at the greens. Okay. So if you look at those greens, there's a little bit of difference 
The stoneware one seems to have that brighter. So this one over here has a little bit brighter on the tips. What happens is it browns out a little bit. Actually, it stayed um, a lot greener than I expected it to. So this is lighter than this. This is more limey. This is um, actually a softer, more of like an apple, what I would consider an apple green. And then um, the, so this is 161 and 162, exactly the same on both, okay? So you can see that you can do the same thing. It's just, they're gonna change a little bit on your high fire or excuse me, mid range is what, um, I consider it high fire when it goes to a cone five, six, uh, low fire if it's an 04, 06 but you guys call it mid-range, so I got to start changing my terminology. Good evening, Vivian. Thanks for joining me. New York. Awesome. So I used um, Jessica's 2167 on the stoneware one, and I only did one coat. And so for those of you that have only done one coat, if you use that particular glaze, I noticed that where my colors were heavier, and I don't know if I can get it to show up in the light. Do you see how that looks kind of orange peely? It needs more glaze there. It's it's not rough. It's just more of a, there you can see it, more of a matte versus a, a nice shiny. And it's only on the reds where there was a heavier deposit of the colors. Okay. So these were done with color concentrates. Um, the leaves, I did them mixed with 50-50 with the gloss medium so I could do a two color blend. And the flowers were just done um, stroked in. And I actually used a mop brush to do that. And this is one of the pieces that I'm gonna do. You know what? I just noticed a crack here on this one too. This is Bis from Mako. This is stoneware. It's not on the back side, but boy, it's on the front side there. See that? So it'll probably split. Um, my carbridge sent me some of uh, the Mako bisque so that I could do some samples on it because I did not have any. And I wanted to show if you didn't roll out your own clay and make your own shapes, you know, that there was some commercial pieces available. Hey, Nancy, thanks for joining. Okay, so this one is the stoneware. Now in the background, you see it kind of has that um, aqua look. I used the CS657 Jade. Okay, and that is one of the colors that I put in that clay share kit. Okay, these are the old bottles. These are the new bottles. So uh, during COVID, we couldn't get these footed bottles. So we, we're switching over to these. So you may have some colors that come from us in both bottles, depending on when they were bottled and, and when we ran out. Okay, so this one is the stoneware use that and why did i use this one okay so the color strokes have a the pigment they're they have an opaque base to them that's why they're an opaque underglaze and then they have a smidge of glaze not a whole lot they do not have a whole bunch of glaze like mako stroking coats because with makos you if you put on uh your three coats you don't have to put a clear over it you do have to put a clear over mine okay and Bridge, yes, I, this is one of the pieces, Bridge, that I'm teaching at the event, the Fired Arts event. I just posted it on that Facebook page. Uh, Mike is out of town this week, and uh, as soon as he gets back, I'm sure he'll get everything listed as far as classes. So this is one of them. Uh, one of the other classes is going to be the sweet pea, that purple sweet pea. So here's my earthenware piece. I'm painting and here's my stoneware piece so the sweet pea with the butterfly that'll be another one and then that lemon uh with the strawberries that i posted and it's not fired yet so it's already it's got glaze on it i can't show you so that's another one and the other one is a mug and i don't have it in front of me either but yeah so there'll be four different choices and then i'll probably throw in a glass piece also okay so i used in the background, I'm getting off track, the uh, color stroke because it already had some glaze in it and I could do like a watercolor wash in my background. Now, if you don't have the color strokes, could you take 
um, aqua splash. Yes. And, and with your uh, gloss medium. Okay, so if you mix these 50 50, you get basically a color stroke is what you're going to get. So it's got enough glaze in it that it allows you to manipulate and move it around. You can do those watercolor looks and you can do the two or three color blending like I've done on the leaves. Okay, so that's one of the big uh, differences. We came out with the color strokes years and years ago because uh, for the contemporary market, you know, the walk in, the paint your own pottery studios. Um, basically, it's a pre mix for you because they're not going to want to take a color and a glaze and mix it. But if you only have that, then all you do is add the gloss medium to your color concentrates. Don't forget that you can mix any two colors together to get another color. Okay. So if you've got black and white, you can make a tint or a shade. And you can lighten them, darken, you know, if you've only got um, blue and yellow to make green. So anyway, they're intermixable. You got 41 colors available. Your color strokes, in case you haven't looked on the back of your folder, is uh, 61 colors. And then we have a spec down here. So if you're familiar with Gare's Fleckles, so they have um, like a yellow with a fleck in it, an orange or red, whatever, with it in there. So like for bananas, apples, oranges, pears. Now, I don't know that I, when I used this many, many years ago on cone 5-6, those specks get larger. So you need to test if you decide to go and add this to a color, okay? You would need to test that because I do not have any uh, current samples to see what will happen. But when I did it, the specs got larger. So instead of selling you a yellow with a spec and a yellow without, I just sell you, especially if you're on regular earthenware ceramics, you can just add that to it, okay? I don't see any questions. Jenny, have I missed anything? Don't think so? Okay. Um, so you've got 61 uh, colors in this. Again, intermixable if you want to make a color, but we've pretty much made a lot of that for you. Um, I like to put down a base because this is opaque with these, and then sometimes I use the concentrates on top. The color concentrates, and you've got a little brush stroke chip there. They're better or easier, I should say, to do brush work with. If you're going to do brush strokes because they're thinner these are thicker product it's harder to get a fine line and detail with it so that's when the color concentrates come in too that's for your fine line detailing type stuff or even shading on top okay um any questions about that anybody got any questions they want to put in no? All right. Let me set these down. And uh, real quickly, I'll show you. So here's the piece that I did that everybody thought the background was yellow. This is a textured piece done with a rolling pin. Uh, this particular rolling pin is by Sharon Hoppy, and she lives about 20 minutes from me. So that was convenient. So you can antique the piece. I antiqued with a color concentrate, okay? I used 160 key lime, and now you can see it. I think that it was just, it was really late the other night when I took the photograph, uh, when I first painted it, and that kind of give it a yellow cast to it. And then I actually used um, color concentrates, or excuse me, color strokes for my purples, because the purples in the color strokes, just the makeup of how these are made and encapsulated, they're going to hold better for your pinks and purples. Okay, so I put on some orchid, I added some bright violet, and I actually went into the deep crimson and shaded with it. And then I came back and I stippled in the centers with some, some of the original green, the 160. I added just a tiny, tiny touch of the black um the dots on here are purple so these are actually in the rolling pin i just went in and dotted them um, i did white color concentrate 
on uh, the tips. I assume he shaded it. Okay, let me grab that bottle so you can see. So this was on white porcelain, but what I wanted was, I wanted the green when I researched these flowers and I can't say their name, Anomi or something like that. They remind me of a poppy. Um, they had, a, the white ones had a lot of green veining in it. So I thought, okay, I'll get that by antiquing. And then I wanna make sure that this stayed white. So I took the white and I assuming shaded it up near the tip. So I just had my water in my brush, the white, and I assume shaded the white up there just to give it a punch, a little bit more of a white to make sure it didn't come out green. So see, this is a white porcelain. Hey guys, I forgot to tell you, look, I got me a stamp made. So it says handmade and my initials. Isn't that cool? So professional now. Thanks, Marie. I'm glad you like it. Hey, Stacy from Colorado. Your Jameson, your talent is so amazing. Wow. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, I love what I do, and I have been very fortunate uh, since my children were born and I left corporate that this is what I've been able to do. So, um, how many people can say they love their job? You know, right now, anyway. So, anyway, so that's white porcelain. And you can see I even did the strokes. This has got Jessica's uh, 2167 over it also. And I only did one coat on it. And it seems to be great. Because I think I'm heavy handed because I'm used to the glaze flowing. And the cone six glazes do not move uh, like I'm used to them moving. OK. Um, I don't remember if I showed you this a couple. This has got color strokes on it. So this is one of Sharon Hoppy's, um, as far as her shapes. She also made stencils to go with it. So the stencil is that little tiny, tiny fine line. And that's, gosh, maybe a 16th of an inch. Uh, put on the wet clay, rolled in. And then I came in and I sponged with one of those sponge uh, daubers. Everybody knows what that is, right? So I just took the color and loaded it. And I sponged and I went light to medium to dark and then just made sure I got it around. So that was all done on wet clay. Can you use, this was color strokes. Okay, this was 633, 634, and 632 deep crimson. All on the wet clay. Then, if you like, it, maybe you don't have color, con, uh, color strokes. This one was a stencil. This is also a Sharon Hoppy um, shape and stencil that she carries and created and this is color concentrates start with your light sponge it all the way around go to your um, this is 150 151 and 152 as far as the cerulean so you're just working and i just keep i think i even posted a little video as i was doing this with my uh, phone i was trying to hold it while i was working so it's a way to get color on there if you like to if you're rolling out your own clay and uh, you could do any stencil. You know, I've got some stencils. Uh, I don't know if I've got one of them back here. I think I took them all in with my clay. But they're like a butterfly that's just the shape of a butterfly. So it'd be similar to this one. You could roll out your clay, press it in, do the, one of the little pony rollers, and it presses into the clay that allows the rest of the clay to be raised up for you to apply the color. And I didn't have any problem with it bleeding underneath. So either product line can be used color concentrates color strokes depends on how opaque you want it i mean these are translucent so you can kind of see all three colors there a little bit of each one of them they can be more opaque the more coats you put on just remember that multiple thin coats is better than one thick heavy coat on anything you're doing any product line you're doing you get too heavy, it's going to chip off. Okay. Um, so I, you guys have seen this one. This is the same butterfly color concentrates on all this. So I waited till it was this to do my antiquing on my textured areas. Okay. So that's another way to use the concentrates or you could antique with the color strokes also. Either one. Um, here's the lemons. So I use color concentrates on here. 
when I did my leaves, I mixed it with the gloss medium because I wanted to do a three color blend. I've got three different uh, colors on there. Okay. So when I want to do that three color blend, I mix it with the gloss medium. Can you do it just pure concentrate? Yes. It's just going to be more difficult to get a good transition from one color to the yeah. other. And then just build up your layers a little bit at a time. Don't get in a hurry and get it too thick. Okay. All right. So I did the piece that um, ended up messing up and I posted it. So this is the one that had the two different purples. They kind of went away. So what I just did was I went into my I wanted to show you this because I know Jessica talked about it on one of hers. So this is my enamels. This is G337 New Bright Violet. It's a powder. Okay, so if you're not familiar, it's like a china paint is what she was referring to. Um, so it's a powder and you mix it with our glaze, or excuse me, our glass medium. Okay, so this is a product that is glass products together. And I'll even show you a little bit of it. Um, and I have these little jars I put mine in. Okay, so it's all mixed up in here. Let me give it a good stir. So this is a way that you could touch up something or maybe you went and purchased something and you didn't like the color of it. And I'll post after I fire this because this is my first try doing this. So I just took the semi brush and my color and I just kind of pat it on. You can brush it on. If I go back over this, it's going to start pulling off what's already there. Okay. Because it's just sitting on the surface. It's not like our bisque where the color is going to absorb into it. It's just sitting on top of that glazed surface. So you could do that. Now, the other day I posted one. This is my little square dish. And I was disappointed. I lost some color. These are my purples. And I actually used the color stroke purples, all three of them. 36, 7, and 8, and I lost it. So what I'm going to do is use that purple from the enamel line, and look here. I can come in, and I can add, and then I can take this back to an 015, 016, 017 range. So if you've got some decals going, um, gold, it would work. And see, it's kind of falling and antiquing itself, but I'm probably going to do this all over the whole thing. I could go in here and do all, all the different colors. Now, this has not got glaze on it. This is just white porcelain, and it just had the colors on it. The reason it's glossing, can you see, see if I can get it to, it's kind of got a little bit of a gloss. It's hard to see on the camera to it, and that's because there is a little bit of glaze in those color strokes okay i shouldn't have i should have put it on heavier and probably not even wiped it back but i thought well this will be a good opportunity to use the enamels and then show you what happens to it so see how i can put that on there and it just almost repels out of the uh, textured areas i think that will look kind of cool so that's what i'm going to do with that even though you say you lost the color on the small dish, I love the paste. Look perfect. You love the paste. Oh, the pastel. Sorry, I was looking. My lights are okay. Yeah, it it, it would it would absolutely. Um, this is actually a piece that I'm making um, for a lady that helped me with my car. So uh, she loves purples. So I want it to be more purple. But see that? I mean, I think that looks kind of cool. It, it kind of repels off of the high points. And I will post, uh, I won't fire this tonight. Maybe I'll fire it tomorrow sometime. I like to have more than just one piece. So I've got these two. But see how easy that is? I'm just using the Sumi brush to apply it. You could use a Taclon brush. The Sumi is just going to be a softer look to it is the difference. Okay. So it just really depends on uh, what you want. So I think that looks kind of cool. And it will be glossy because the enamels do um, shine up. 
Okay, any questions about that? No. All right. Oh, you like my stamp, Eddie. Thank you. Actually, it's two stamps. Um, so I got the handmade in case I decide to change. Um, I've got a guy that's working on uh, like a wooden stamp for me with one of my flowers. But yeah, that, I think I found a place on Etsy or something that I did that. Okay, so the other piece that was absolutely gorgeous when I did this one, and it had the burgundy on it, it had the aqua and the green. I lost my burgundy. It's okay, but this was all supposed to be pink cranberry color. And it's gone. But there is a little bit of gloss to it, even though there's no glaze on this. I left it just the bare porcelain. So the 132 is what was in here, and it went away. Now, my remedy for that, I am going to take the 632, because I know those colors hold better. Now, applying it thin, it may not hold. I don't know. I may have to go back and do uh, the glass enamels with it, but I can take that. It looks pink going on, but it is a uh, burgundy color when it fires. But I'm not sure if it's going to be dark enough, but it will change it. That's okay. You know, it's an experiment and I'm trying to do things before you guys uh, do them. And then you've got, you know, I try to answer them for you. So hopefully I've made the mistakes and you won't make them. All right, any questions about that? Nope, boy, they're quiet tonight. Huh? All right. So anybody have any specific questions regarding color concentrate? Um, if you're doing the brush strokes, I would use the concentrates. Um, if that's all you got and you want to do those two color blends on your leaves, then uh, just add your gloss medium to it. You don't have to buy a whole nother line. But I did come out with that kit for you guys that are Clay Share members or anybody that has all of those purples and pinks in it. Okay. And they're in the two ounce bottle. And I believe that kit only has this, this new bottle because we did it so new. Okay. And you get uh, 12 colors in there. And I did put those back on sale. Just FYI. So let me show you um, if you've got the concentrates and you want to do the leaves in that two color blend that I'm talking about, all you've got. Now, like on this piece, I did stroke work with just the concentrates because I wanted to do a brush stroke. And I'll go back and show you that other half of that one. Okay, but all I have to do is add equal parts of the gloss medium, CSP. This particular piece here, Stacy, is Mako Stoneware. Okay. The square, because I'm doing one in mid range and I'm doing one in earthenware for my class, because in Wisconsin, I'm going to teach the class the same way. And you may be in the class and you only work on stoneware or maybe you only work on earthenware ceramic. Okay. Hey, Talisa, thanks for joining. So I want to show the same product on both pieces or both firing ranges. Okay. So if you only have concentrates, you can just mix the color and the CSP01 which is the gloss medium and there is color under there and I'm mixing with the handle of my brush because I don't want to waste it. If you mix with the hairs, then you've got to rinse the brush out and you've wasted a lot of your money. Okay. So that's the reason I'm doing that. I always like to try to put a sponge there, but if you were doing um, a two color blend on these larger leaves, so there's one here on the edge, I'm using the small semi brush. And I'm going to just start out here and it grabs really bad. Uh, well, not bad, but it grabs to the uh, stoneware bisque because it is so porous. So I'm halfway to three fourths of the way back, turn, pick up, 
the darker green. Now I've mixed these with the medium, remember, and I'm going to just sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right and walk it to the left. And I just keep The glass medium is GM300, Eddie. If you just type in glass medium in the um, search bar, we have, if you think you want to use any of those to touch up things, we have a sampler kit. And let me see if I have it in my little bag of tricks here. And I can post it. I don't remember if I do or not. So the brushes that I'm using, I'll put this up there. So these are the Sumi brushes, okay? And uh, I think I still have them on sale. So those are that one. And let me look and see if I have. I don't remember. I Jenny can probably put it in there quicker than I can find it. I didn't load these up in particular order. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, the one I did showed up, but yours didn't. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Jenny, Jenny did put it in. So, like, we have different kits, Eddie. So here is um, the fall kit. So it comes with the same size, the small two ounce medium. Okay, it has a couple of our bubble colors, and then it has some of the regular enamels in it. So there's one of the kits. Um, let me see what else I've got in my bag of tricks here. Hold on. It'll take me a second to go through them all to see what I've got. And I don't know that I have, yeah, I don't think I have any of the other kits. Yeah, the only other one I've got is like the um, CC Enhancer kit here. This is um, all 41 in the one ounce size. You can get it in the two ounce also. Okay. So you can just go to the enamel page or you can just type in kits and it's going to bring up everything kit wise. Once you're done with the dark color, if you're doing this two color blend, then I just wiped out what's left on my brush and then I'm going to go to another one. And you're going to do a couple of coats like this because the first one looks a really lined. Am I on? Okay. Make sure I'm on the screen. Oh, the gloss. Okay. All right. So that's CSP01 Gloss Medium MT Clear. So this is my earthenware or low fire clear glaze that we use. But when you guys are using it, if you're doing cone five, six, you're just mixing it with the color concentrates and you're only spot glazing, so to speak. Do not use it as an overall clear glaze because it will craze on you. It's not made for high fire as far as that. So it's just for the blending techniques. See how I just keep working that to make it blend. And then you've got a nice transition from one to the other. Wipe out the dark, just wipe, wipe. Don't mess with it and take everything out. The more you leave in there, the less product you're wasting and it's going to blend better. And then you can go back and do a second coat. You can see how fast that dries. So sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left. And it makes a huge difference which way you're turning. So constantly turn your piece so that you're aiming or tucking that brush where you want it. Okay. That's the big key. You're welcome. Okay, so yeah, if you just type in gloss medium in the search bar, Eddie, you should be able to find it. I thought you bought some of that last time, but maybe not. Okay, so you can see how you can make it. So what I did was essentially make a color stroke type product out of this concentrate mixed 50-50 with the gloss medium. Sometimes with the darker colors, like the green or black or the dark blues, you may have to mix a little more than 50-50, okay? Because they're thicker and you want these to be the same consistency. Um, it just makes it easier and it allows the blending to be better. You get a better coverage, okay? All right. So now I'm just going to, why I like the concentrates versus the color strokes for brush strokes, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and use, even though um, 
I probably, I wouldn't have put the medium in it, but it's not going to make any difference for me. It's still going to be a nice. So I'm going to fully load in a light green and I'm going to corner in a dark. I'm using a number eight square shader and I'm blending on my palette and I can just do a brush stroke. It's just really nice and fine compared to uh, the color stroke is thicker. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't think it's going to make any difference. It's just a thicker product. Um, you can't really feel the glaze or the clay in it, but remember it's made for an opaque underglaze is what it is. It just doesn't have the amount of glaze that stroke and coats or concepts those are pretty much a glaze in a squeeze bottle. Mine is back to the old fashioned on gobe or opaque underglaze. Colorobia calls them on gobes. Um, I used to work for them for five years, many, many moons ago. And they have some great products. Yes, ma'am. The mix does fire fine to cone six. That's what I did on the lemons. So on the leaves here, it had the 50-50. The difference is the greens are going to change. They tend to brown a little more instead of staying green, green. Okay. That's the only difference. And if you look at those charts that I did for you, or you've made your own chart. Okay. So here's the 60. So you can see how it changed quite a bit. Sometimes cameras are not good. The 61 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, they tend to brown out a little bit. So the right hand side of these chips have been clear glazed with two coats. Uh, and I used back then I was using the only thing I could get my hands on, which was Amico HF 59. Okay. Or HF 9, excuse me, not 59. <laughs> Zinc free. Okay. Now I can tell you my carburage has used Mako's zinc free and zinc clear and he seems to like both of them so test 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 either do you a little test like this i just antiqued wiped back and added the clear on the right hand side remember on the blog post and if jenny wants to grab it and put a link in um and i can go back and put it into the description too of the youtube um there if you go to clay share con 2022 search for that on the website and in the blog, it'll pop up and these charts are there. There's a five page PDF that you can download them. And uh, some of the pieces that I did, all of that is in there for you. OK. And yeah, the mix fires fine, Talisa. It's just you're doing it in such a small area, small amount. So it's not going to make any difference. Hopefully that makes sense. But if you're going to do a brush stroke, the color concentrates are definitely uh, a thinner product and they're easier, I personally think, to work with. Okay. What else? Um, you can use either one of these on bisque or greenware on either surface, your 04, 06, or your mid range, cone 5, cone 6. So, this particular piece was on B-Mix clay and I carved some of it out. So this is all three of the Cerulean's, if I remember correctly, 50, 51, and 52. And then I carved out because it was on the greenware state. So yes, you can do it. Don't put any of the products on the foot of your piece because if you do that, then see this is inside the foot. It could stick to, these will stick as far as the color strokes because they have enough glaze in them, they would stick to your shelf. So do not put those on the foot of your piece or where anything is going to touch, uh, like a jar, a lid. Um, say you were doing one of the butter dishes, um, you don't want to want that product on there because it'll fuse it together. Okay, so this was done in the greenware state. And actually, so was the um, the blue one. Mm, I don't want to do that. That's a heavy piece. I should move that <laughs> before I end up breaking it, since I only have a couple. 
So this was same thing. This was greenware. This was a B mix, and it has those purples on it that are in that clay share kit that I just made. And see how much the uh, greens browned. But I want you to look at something, and this is what I'm trying to. I'm trying all different surfaces because I want to know why. And so this may be a good question for Jessica at some point. Look at the green, same greens. This is Mako Stonemore Bisque, okay? This is clay that I rolled out, B-Mix. Look how brown those greens are. And then look at those. Now, the only difference is these, I did put the medium in it. So I need to do a test side by side to see if that's going to make the difference and as far as the color change. Okay, so just a thought. Keep that in mind. All right, any other questions, Jenny? Okay, all right. I think that's kind of all I've got for you tonight. I just wanted to kind of run through those again and make sure that everybody was aware what you can do. So you can use either or. You just know that if you've only got the concentrates, you can add the medium to it to create blendable colors that just helps you blend especially if you're new to painting the style of painting that is good for it if you've got three greens in the colors or two greens in the color strokes you can do the same two color blending with that that i just did with these because remember when you add the medium you're creating a color stroke type product is what you're creating okay I love those. I use B mix and okay. Yeah, you know, they ran out of B mix, Talissa. So I had to go to porcelain and um, that's what was on that textured floral piece. And I really like, let me turn this one over. I think you can see the difference. This one's wider, this one's more of that beige. So that's going to change your colors too. Okay, that will, because this is the 160. This has got, um, I think it's got 160 and 162. I'd have to go back and look at my video. Okay. So the color of the clay, if you put it on dark clay, it's going to make a difference. If you cast in um, earthenware in a terracotta, it's going to make a difference. Okay. Hopefully that helps you guys. All right. Let me switch back. And... Turn my microphone. microphone. Oh, okay. All right, guys. Any last questions? I need your feedback on what you'd like to see on a future live. Tell me what you want to see. Um, I am. Pardon. Prizes. Yes, we got to do prizes. We're giving away a couple of <clears throat> tote bags. Uh, those of you that are earthenware, it's Booth Mold Company. It's a nice size little tote. When I was up there, that's who I bought the business from uh, back in 2006. And her son, Patty's son, gave me a bunch of these tote bags. And I was like, I'll give them away. Yeah, don't throw them away. Somebody will want them. So we've got two tote bags. We're going to do a um, downloadable packet, $12.50 or less. And what else? To, oh, and then I said I would give away that plate. So, all right, let's do a tote bag. Jenny's going to spin through the comments. I should know not to pull weeds today and then watch your videos. Now I'm exhausted <laughs> and want to glaze everything. That is true. I, I've been doing some late nights. We will not have a live next Tuesday unless I come to you live on the road. Just something fun. Um, I am actually going to take a week off. My sister and I are... Um, taking a road trip for the girls so she lost her husband husband five years ago so um i think it'll do us both good so okay the first winner is nancy okay and you probably said it better than i can say it kovaleski is that right yeah i think that's right all right nancy awesome i can't remember where you're at nancy Hey, Karen. Okay, so Jenny has put it in the comments there. So you've won a tote bag. Um, I'm assuming everybody can use a tote bag. Okay. Okay. Next. 
Deb Hudgens is the winner of the second tote bag. Now, if you win tonight, make sure you message me and give me your shipping information. Um, if you're putting an order in, I can add it to that order. Just let me know. Uh, but put it in the comments section of your order. Uh, sometimes it's hard. There's so many of you, it's hard for me to keep track of everybody. Okay. All right. Then what I, oh, a packet, um, a downloadable technique packet. You can choose one that's uh, $12.95 or less that's on the website, and then I'll send you the PDF. Uh, unless you'd rather have uh, the hard copy, I can mail it to you. Okay. And the winner of that one is Jenny. Vivian, and what was the last name you cut out? Vivian Phillips. You won a downloadable technique packet. So it could be glass or ceramic. You can just go out to the websites, um, go to the education tab, go to the uh, learn here, and then you can go through uh, the different class in a bags, I call them. Okay. All right. So the last prize. Now, remember, this plate has a blemish on it. So don't hold me. <laughs> so this is. The one I did on a live a couple of weeks ago. So the winner of this, and this is like a six or set seven inch plate, I think it is. Winner of this one is Jameson. You got to come and get it. <laughs> You're just across town. Actually, I'll probably be over that way soon, I'm sure. So, all right. I don't even know if he's still on there. Are you still on Jameson? Jameson's from across town. He's over on the east side of Dallas. So that'll tickle him. <laughs> All right, guys. So no live next week. So the following week will be glass. And um, unless I come live to you from on the road. Thanks for joining. Oh, he is there. What? <laughs> you won. Apollo original. I just kind of sketched that on that night. So yeah, I can drop it in the mail to you. Um, I think I, I know I have your address. So Unless you're needing something, let me know. Okay. All right. So congratulations, everyone. And I'm going to sign off. I'll see you next two weeks, two weeks away. Okay. And just watch for the post. Make sure you've subscribed to the channel. Uh, click on the bell so you get all notifications because there's different uh, ones on that. And please share, like. Um, I'm almost at 6,000 subscribers. I'm like at 5867. So share with your friends. Let's try to get it to 6,000. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good night.